Hey guys, even here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. First, we got Samson Dauda, who is four days out of Prague Pro, and uh, this is gonna be his last show this year. So he did a couple of shows post-Olympia, after finishing third at a Mr. Olympia. I thought he was gonna lay off for a while, you know, focus on improving for next year, but no, he already won Romania, and now he's about to win Prague Pro. Before we take a look at Samson Dauda's physique right now and what he's bringing to this show, let's take a look at the official list first. So we got Marcelo D'Angelis also competing again and Nathan Diasha. That's gonna be an interesting rematch. And then we also got Samson Dauda, of course. Roman Fritz is also jumping in. This is like his 30th show this year. And we also have uh, Michal Krizo doing this show and he's probably gonna be the biggest threat to Samson Dauda. So let's take a look at Samson Dauda first and what he's gonna bring to this show. So the biggest criticism that Samson received at the Mr. Olympia, of course, aside from back development, was conditioning. And that is something that he can change in a week or two. So coming to Prague Pro, the question is, did he improve his conditioning even more from Romania? Because I believe he was sharper at Romania than he was at the Mr. Olympia. And it seems like he's bringing something even more conditioned for Prague Pro and does he really need to come in super shredded to win this type of a show? No, I don't think so. I mean, he already beat pretty much everybody at the Mr. Olympia, almost everybody except for those two guys, and he wasn't very conditioned. Uh, is he gonna be sharper here? I think so, I think he will, but once again, he doesn't need to do that if he wants to win. He can win the way he was at the Mr. Olympia, but take a look at the Christmas tree right here and the lats, and just the back, and these back poses, the glutes and the hamstrings, so he's definitely bringing something better, if you ask me, uh, than the Mr. Olympia, look at the back, like, it wasn't like this on the Mr. Olympia stage, I also know that lighting here is really good, better than on the Mr. Olympia stage, of course, I think any lighting is better than Mr. Olympia lighting this year, but yeah, I still think he's bringing something sharper, and once again, I think it's pretty safe to say that he is winning this show, but if you take a look at the top left corner, you will see that the prize money for Prague Pro is $45,000. So that's a pretty penny, that's a lot of money, and he's winning that. So if you're wondering why is he doing all these shows, is he trying to prove to us that he can bring better conditioning? Is he doing this because he wants to earn a favor of the IFBB by traveling around the world and competing more often? Well, maybe, maybe those are also the reasons, but really, he has another 45,000 reasons, so yeah, I think it's pretty clear why is he doing these shows, especially Prague Pro, and it was always a show that had uh, really big uh, prize money, so Samson won the Arnold Classic Ohio this year, and he won 300k, he placed third at the Mr. Olympia, that is another 100,000, and now with these two shows, and also he already announced that next year he's doing the Arnold Classic, and I'm assuming he's doing the Arnold Classic UK, which has a prize money of $150,000, so Samson is balling, this guy is earning a lot of money from competing, and that's awesome, that's awesome, I wish more bodybuilders were doing stuff like this. Now, like I said, Michal Krizo is most likely going to be the top contender uh, against Samson Dauda at Prague Pro. I highly doubt that it's going to be Horse MD. Uh, I think Horse MD is going to be battling against Tate and Diasha for the third again. And I think Michal Krizo is going to be uh, fighting against Samson Dauda for the first spot. Now, is there a possibility of Michal Krizo winning the EVLS Prague Pro? Well, we all know that he's uh, sponsored by them, that's his sponsor, Cytec Nutrition and EVLS Prague Pro, literally, that's his sponsor, and that's why he needs to do this show, if he wasn't sponsored by them, I don't know if he would do it, I mean, he knows that Samson is doing it, so odds are really not in his favor, but let's assume he improves a lot somehow, he brings something like much fuller, much harder, and Samson comes in a little bit off, and still, Samson will probably be better, but will they let Krizio win because they are sponsoring him? I mean, it is a panel of the judges that is deciding this, it's not the showrunners, but they are the ones uh, paying the judges, flying them in, and maybe they pay them a little bit extra to, to uh, judge in uh, Krizio's favor. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen, I don't think so. I think um, if it is super, super close... If nobody was sure who was gonna win, then maybe they would give Grisha the edge. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think Samson is gonna win, convincingly. 
and it wouldn't matter that Grigio was sponsored by them. Now, if Bakru Stabani was doing this show as he planned to, and yeah, he planned to do it, he was supposed to do it, but uh, his visa was denied, European visa. I don't know why the hell is this guy being denied everywhere. What the hell did he do in his past? I mean, what is the reason? I don't know. But he is not able to, to compete. Even if he competed, I still believe Krizio would beat him. I still think it would be Krizio and Samson a top two. Now, what can Krizio really do in order to challenge Samson, actually? Well, all he can do, in my opinion, is just bring better fullness. Because I believe he was the most conditioned guy on the Mr. Olympia stage. I don't think anybody was this sharp, this detailed, this dry. Basically, from head to toe, from behind, from the front, in every single pose, from every single angle, he was freaking peeled. And obviously, more peeled than he needed to be. I mean, look at Andrew Jack, and look at his glutes and his lower back and compare it to Michael Krizia. He beat him like this. How? How is this possible? He beat him not only by one spot, but by two spots. He also beat Hunter Labrada and Brandon Curry, and then you had Michael Krizio with this kind of condition. Nobody had these kind of details. So why did he play seventh? It's because he lost a lot of that size that he was known for. You know, he is known as being one of the biggest guys in the IBB today. I mean, he's a taller guy, and he is really massive, and uh, he lost a lot of fullness chasing this condition, so... What he can do for Prague Pro is just try and get as full as possible. Because he already has the conditioning. And we know for a fact that no matter what he does, he's going to be more conditioned than Samson Dauda. Now, is this going to be enough for him to win if he comes in like, I don't know, 10 pounds bigger, heavier, fuller, with still probably better conditioning than Samson? No, no, I don't think he can beat him uh, even still. Because... It's not all about conditioning and fullness and stuff like that, size. It's also about uh, the structure, the completeness, uh, the, the flow of the physique in certain poses. And uh, Samson has that going for him all day long. And Krizio, he's still, you know, work in progress. I honestly believe that he can actually reach the very top, but... He's gonna need a couple of more years of training, of competing. I mean, he recently switched federation. This is only his second Mr. Olympia. He still has a long way to go. And he's also a pretty young guy. I think he's like 30, maybe 31. So, yeah, there is a bright future ahead of him. And look at his conditioning once again. Look at this. Look at those freaking details, man. Nobody brought this kind of conditioning, especially in the back. Like, look at his freaking back details. It's insane. So, no matter the outcome, it's still gonna be a lot of fun to see this comparison. Michal Krizio versus Samson Daura. That's gonna be very, very interesting because they're both big and tall guys. And uh, Michal Krizio is basically the conditioning guy now. And Samson is quite the opposite on that spectrum. So, it's definitely gonna be a very, very exciting, very interesting comparison. Now, rounding up that top 5, top 6, we're also gonna have Marcelo De Angelis and Nathan Diasha. Roman Fritz is probably gonna be up there in the mix, but Marcelo and Nathan are gonna have a rematch. That's probably gonna be your third and fourth. Now, the question is, can Nathan beat Marcelo, or is he gonna lose once again? And I don't think Nathan is happy with the way things played out uh, at, the, at the Romania Pro, because... He shared this story, and you can see it in the comments of his posts. He is not happy with the result. He thought he should have placed higher. He felt like he was robbed, that he didn't deserve to be fourth. I mean, I don't know, I wasn't there, but it's pretty obvious from the photos that uh, Horsem did had really freaking impressive legs. And with those legs, I could even see him challenging Bekrus Tabani, who had really weak quads. But he didn't, he placed third, and I don't know about Nathan, I thought, when I was watching the photos, I thought Nathan did enough to place third to beat uh, Horse MD, but apparently he didn't. And in this show, I don't think Nathan Diash and Horse MD were ever uh, one next to another, so I think uh, Prague Pro should do this comparison. If not just a two-man callout, then, you know, at least like the second callout and put them in the center. I would love to watch that battle, that rematch. It will be very interesting. Uh, who do you guys think is going to win uh, the second time? That's also going to be Nathan's last show for this year. He did a lot of shows and I think his body can't hold its peak anymore. 
but he's holding his own he's looking good so maybe if he was completely fresh maybe this was his first show he would beat horse md but he was still at least like 90 95 percent so who's gonna place ahead of who at prague pro all right, and finally we got a physique update of Goodwito, an off-season update. Now, we all know that he was supposed to compete, he was prepping with Chris Asito, and in the end he wasn't able to travel to Europe, uh, but he was able to travel to US, so we thought he might do Legion. He didn't do it, and I guess his off-season started a long time ago. So, I don't think he was wasting time. I mean, he became a father in the meantime, but look at this freaking physique update. I mean, look at those freaking arms. Look at his front double. This is pretty, pretty ridiculous. I mean, look at the legs as well and the small waist and the lats and especially the arms. He's looking really impressive. He's looking humongous. So this, this is one of those guys that can be, again, also top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. I mean, if he prepped for, uh, let's say, uh, Romania, he would probably beat Marcel D'Angelis. Maybe even Behrus Tabani. Who knows? So I would have this guy probably higher than 10th on the Mr. Olympia if he came in condition. I mean, we still don't know, we still haven't seen him against the top pros, we are still waiting for that moment. Hopefully we'll see him next year and we're gonna be able to tell for sure, but I think it is pretty clear that this guy is one of the best bodybuilders in the world today. I think so. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.